Good morning. Welcome home to the church in the gardens, uh, to all who are here in the sanctuary, and to all who join us online. On this, on this first Sunday of Advent morning, it is such a blessing to be with all of you among all God's beloved people. Our minister, Reverend Fred, uh, music director, Dr. Sunny Nebel, the choir members, the greeter, me, Novi, your liturgist, and all the people who serve the Lord today, we all are happy to see you. Today, December the 3rd, we are going to have Holy Communion. So for those who join us virtually, please prepare a piece of bread or a cracker and a beverage for the communion later. For the first time visitors, newcomers or not so new but haven't done this, we welcome you to place your name and contact information on a visitor card in the pew rack in front of your seat. Please place it in the offering plate or give it to the greeter. If you drive here, please make sure you get the parking pass for your car from the greeter to avoid being do, uh, booted. And uh, this is very important. Please remember to silent our cell phones. Now, please listen to some announcements. On Saturday, December 9, from 9 to 1, there will be an event of cleaning of the sanctuary. The sign-up sheet is available in the rear of the sanctuary, or we can send an email to the church. The email address is in the bulletin. Now, I would like to give the opportunity uh, for Hal Christensen to, to make announcement. All of you have one of these in your bulletins and uh, probably received in the mail and weekly word and so forth. <coughs> uh, every year it's been a tradition, the Church of the Gardens, the World Service Committee, to have what we call an angel tree gift giving uh, 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 set of activities. This year, as described in the bulletin, we are going to be <coughs> gathering gifts and we're going to be distributing those gifts to the children at uh, the Springfield uh, Shelter, and also at the Ronald McDonald House on two different uh, occasions. Um, we're asking everybody in church, as they have done very well in the past, to, to donate, donate toys, gifts uh, for those ch children, and bring them to the church, and we will take them to the uh, appropriate, uh, appropriate places. Uh, we need to get this all done by December 15th, because we're going to Ronald McDonald House on, uh, on the 16th. Um, we have about a third of the gifts uh, attributed and signed up for, so we still have a lot of people that need to, to do this, and time is running out, so if you would do that, if you go get this note in your, within your email, you have it right here, go to the link and indicate which kind of gift you want to give. It's mar marked out by children and by gender, I think, is what you want to, uh, want to give, and then to get the gift and bring it to the church. Some of you have gifts, I think, here. You can bring them down to the lounge today and the Yang will be down there, uh, our holiday elf, and she will gather the gifts, uh, and, uh, and we will collect them all, and then we will distribute them when we need to, uh, to distribute them. Uh, we really need to do the kids, you know, there's always a need, and if there's killed kids, always welcome uh, us coming, where we come at, like at the Ronald McDonald House last year, as we did for many years at the Briarwood Shelter, uh, to give them the gifts, they appreciate the gifts, it's important for us and it's important to the church and the garden. This is one of the things we do each year. We're known for this. Uh, so talk to your neighbors, talk to anybody you know who might be willing to, uh, to give a gift. And then they bring, <coughs> sign up on the website and then go to uh, get the gift and bring the gift to, uh, you come on a Sunday, you can bring it on a Sunday between now and the 15th. Uh, or if you can leave it in the breezeway to let Jackie know in the office that you're coming and bringing the gift and so on so we get these, uh, get these organized. But you can do that this week and get a few gifts. Uh, you don't have to limit yourself to one. You can get many, many gifts uh, and, and help out. Um, so if, <coughs> if we can handle that, I think it would be, be very good. This is, as I say, it's a very important for the church. We do it each year. Uh, I do want to be able to fulfill our, our desire to, to help these children out. If you have any questions, you can ask me or in the lounge. Yang will be there and he can help you out. It's, uh, it's a computerized form. 
it's the easiest way to do it and uh, less manpower it takes to do all the signing up we used to do years ago. Um, so, it, but if some of you have difficulty with it, there was some problem with the link at one particular point, but the link on here and so on is, is now. And there's also a QR code for those of you who didn't use QR code. Uh, use that. If you have any problems, uh, you can contact the office. If you have any problems so far, come down to the lounge today after the, after the service and the Yang will straighten you out and get everything taken care of. But stop by and see Yang and, and talk about what, what we're doing for you. I hope you all be participating. It's a great event. We've always enjoyed it and uh, got to do it again. So we need to do a good number of guests in the next uh, week or so. So please put it on your calendar. Thank you. I think that it was changed and she sent out another email, I believe, is that correct? <coughs> and this one is uh, correct, I just, uh, just, I think this one is correct, it's on, uh, it's on here. So if you have any problems, contact Jackie, contact me, contact Jane, somebody who will take it and straighten it out for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Hal. Now we would like to listen from Luke, Troop 96. Thank you, Reverend Fred, for allowing me a few minutes to speak today. Good morning. I'm Luca DeChico, a Boy Scout representative from Troop 96. The church and the gardens in Troop 96 have had a long and wonderful history together. The church has sponsored scouting and our troop for over 75 years. We are extremely grateful for the sponsorship and thank you for your support. I was here last Sunday to announce the troop's resale. Today, after mass, the church will be selling, or we will be selling, 22 inch double sided decorated evergreen wreaths for $25. As I mentioned last week, this fundraiser supports the troop activities for the entire year. Your generosity is truly appreciated. A huge thank you to everyone who pre purchased a wreath. If you pre purchased a wreath last Sunday, please come to me after mass so we could just finalize things. On behalf of Troop 96, I hope you have a very nice day despite for the rain and I hope you have a magical Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Is, is there any more announcement, Kay? You know? All right. All right, so uh, another announcement, uh, the most important one is that next, sun, next Chris, I mean, Sunday on December 24th, uh, Christmas Eve, there will be no morning worship service so we can choose either either one at four or five, uh, nine or attend both our brothers and sisters and monk works our rich work neighbors urgently need the gifts of food please bring canned food and non-perishable donations every sunday to the basket uh, of the sanctuary entrance thank you and uh, to the people who need prayers for healing for those who are mourning and who live in residential care, Reverend Fred will pray for you in the pastoral prayer later in this service. Good morning. Good morning. I add my welcome to the church in the gardens this Sunday, December 3rd, 2023, and a special welcome to those who are worshiping with us here or online for the first time. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. This is the first Sunday of the season of Advent leading up to Christmas, a time of preparation and active waiting. The first Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of hope. This is also a communion Sunday, as we've heard. Thanks to all who've prepared for our communion here. And again, those with us online, please prepare for yourself a piece of bread and a cup of juice or substitute. Let us pray. O oh God of hope, at this time of year when darkness comes early and falls heavy on so many of us, and in this year in our nation and world when hope can seem hard to come by, we lean on and we lean into the hope that we have in you. Come, fill us with your hope, fill us with your light, and let everybody say, Amen. 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 While remaining seated, please join me in seeing the call to worship as found in your bulletin. Tear open the heavens and bring forth your presence. We watch and we wait for the glory to come. 
come. We gather in hope. We watch and we wait for the coming birth. Revive us, restore us. We, we watch and we, and we wait. wait. O come, O come, o come, come Emmanuel. Today, we light the first candle of the Advent wreath, the candle of hope. is with us, hope is, hope is with us and all around us. Let us turn now to our opening hymn. This is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, hymn 103, and let us all stand and sing together all four verses.
Please join me in the prayer of confession as found in your bulletin. I'll begin. We are called to lift up our souls to God, but we prefer to lift up only what we're proud of. God calls us to lift up our whole self. O oh God, be with us in this brief time of silent reflection. and be with us as we sing. Siblings in Christ, God makes us and calls us for life abundant. Together, you are forgiven, free from all that holds you down or holds you back. Live in that hope. Live in that peace. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share with one another a sign of peace. Peace. Peace with you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I, I think the choir wins the best dressed award of the, of the day. I asked them to wear Advent colors, which is complicated because it could either be blue or violet, which is good news. Not everyone has violet uh, at home. Um, I went with a combination of both. Um, this morning we have a special selection. This is Advent message from Martin Howe. And we have a soli, meaning a group of soloists. And that is Ira Absol, Agnes and Penny Mimbuzi, and Novi Suhero. Thank you.
The first lesson for this first Sunday of Advent is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. The prophet writes, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds, that we did not expect. You came down, the mountains quake at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has received, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all of your people. God bless our hearing of the word. Our gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, beginning with verse 24. Jesus is speaking. Jesus says, But in those days, after the suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels, and gather the elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about the day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep away, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or at cockerel, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep away. This is
Christmas to Christmas. Praise God. I'd like to invite the kids up front. I'd like you to come right on up and go ahead and sit right here in the first pew or if you'd like stand along the, the wall and the double doors there. Sound fair? All right. Come on, come on up. Hey, sit wherever you want. Or if you want to stand over. We got all this stuff up here, so I want to get you guys over there. Yeah, great, thanks. All right, great to see you all. Good. Well, you found out where the screen is. Yeah, right under there. <laughs> but that's not what I'm going to ask about. So what looks different in the church today? Here and here. Everything is purple. I like that. All right. Well, so, so point to something purple. What, what are you pointing? You were pointing over there too. The candles. All except one of them, and we'll get to that one in a couple of weeks. Candles. And right here, yeah, the paraments on the pulpit and lectern and, and the altar up there. Anything else? What do you put? Oh, yeah. Now, wait a minute. You got to come to coffee hour because this is really cool. <laughs> we, we, we heard that, that you get blue and violet or purple at Advent. Our tie guy, Ernie Searle, came up with this tie, which is blue and purple at the same time. It boggles science. You have to take a look at it <laughs> when you come down. Thank you. All right, others? The ribbons on the wreath. So yeah, fan down. Wait a minute. You're looking in the right direction. See anything up there? What do you see? The, the hanging banners. Now, I'm lucky, and the choir was lucky. Nobody's lucky when we're up here. A lot of you may not have even noticed it, but if you want to look around or stand up and look around, we have these special banners up there. Yeah. So we're in the season of Advent. Advent means coming. It basically means something's coming. So what's coming in a few weeks? Christmas. All right, good. We got that right. As in big fat guys with beards and reindeer, as in Christ Mass. Right? Christ is what we celebrate. Mass more or less means celebrate. So we're celebrating Christ. We're celebrating Christ coming at Christmas. Love came down at Christmas. So that's what Advent is all about. We're going to talk more about that with the adults. I think you guys are going to start talking about all kinds of special things that are coming up in these next few weeks. Okay? Oh, one more thing I should say. What does the first banner say? Hope. So this Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, as we heard when our family lit the Advent wreath, the first candle of the Advent wreath is the candle of hope. The first banner is the banner of hope. And hope is what we always live with and what keeps us strong. Hope in Christ. All right, thank you all so much. Have fun in Sunday school. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. Now, one thing I thought somebody might say, what looks different in church, the pews are clean. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, so, so I want to thank Kay Finch, you spearheaded, facilitated all that yesterday, and all the volunteers who were here, including we had some Boy Scouts and Boy Scout families here and a number of folks uh, from the church. So thank you all so much for that. And when most of us were cleaning, Cindy Herendine was just sitting on her thumbs. No, she, she was doing all this, setting all this up. So thank you, Cindy, for getting all these Advent uh, paraments and items up in the church. 
and cleaned all these areas before putting them up. All right. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you so much. And maybe while we're at it, I, I, uh, we don't have a lot of time to take on this, but we had almost like an apocalyptic, uh, elliptic event here on Friday night. Horrible flooding over in the Paris Hall, thanks to Betty Chen, who sounded the alarm and did a lot to, to keep that in line, and, and volunteers who came out uh, to help with that at 9.30 or so on a Friday night. We got a bunch of people from the church together. So thank you all for keeping that flooding to a very minimal level could have been so much worse now you can see one of the themes one of the traditional themes of the advent season in the title for this homily in the bulletin keep alert and you can hear the same theme in our lessons that novi just read especially in our gospel lesson where jesus says it repeatedly keep awake keep alert and in that same gospel lesson, and even more so in our first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we hear another traditional Advent theme, the idea of waiting and anticipating. On this first Sunday of Advent, at the beginning of this new church year, which brings us from the calendar year 2023 with all of its joys and sadnesses and challenges into a new calendar year and new opportunities to live and explore and live into our faith, these ideas of keeping alert and of waiting play on at least two broad levels. The one we wait for and anticipate, we're talking about with the kids, the coming of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, of course, when we wait and wait to celebrate with all the festivity and joy and childlike wonder that we can muster that God is with us, Emmanuel. We remember how love came down at Christmas, how God was born among us as one of us to bring the light. If that isn't worth remembering and celebrating and savoring every year and every day of our lives, I don't know what is. So we got that. And on another level, and according to deep and dear Christian tradition, which we see and heard so clearly in our gospel lesson, we wait for and we anticipate, we keep alert for Jesus Christ to come again to bring love and joy and peace and hope to our world once and for all. And we, as followers of Christ, as the body of Christ, in and for this place and time, are an active, anticipating, awake, and alert part of that coming. In the time we have for this homily on this Communion Sunday and first Sunday of Advent, I want to consider this one line from our first lesson that I find so compelling for this Advent season as we keep alert and awake and as we look to be faithful and to live out faithfully what and who we are. The prophet Isaiah writes, From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait. You can hear right there what we're focusing on, what we were focusing on in last Sunday's lesson and sermon, that idea of God working, acting, having an impact in the world and in our lives. And you can hear that idea of waiting that we've already been talking about and that's so much a part of Advent. But there's a problem. Ever since I was a kid, and even still, given the sorts of American ideas and ideals that I was raised with and that are still so prevalent in our country today, I always thought of waiting as, eh, first of all, kind of boring, and second of all, inactive, 
passive, maybe even a lazy thing to do. Just sort of blah, waiting. But nothing could be further from the biblical truth and the biblical wisdom. Just this verse alone from the prophet Isaiah shows it brilliantly. Firstly, that simple juxtaposition, God working, us waiting. But just on the surface of it, we're made in the image of God. So aren't we kind of made to work, to do God's work, to do the sort of work that God is up to? And the prophet Isaiah throughout the whole book of Isaiah, over and over and over again, calls us, calls the people to act on their faith. So what's going on with this waiting business? Well, some preachers and teachers, even secular psychologists and counselors and life coaches, even business and professional coaches, pick up on this biblical truth and this biblical wisdom. They talk about active waiting. From a business standpoint, you know you're not going to be a Fortune 500 company tomorrow or even next year. And if you're smart, <coughs> and I wish that more people were smart, you're not going to burn yourself out and your colleagues and employees out trying to make it happen tomorrow. So what do you do? Well, you start to act like what you're expecting and anticipating is indeed just coming around the bend. You start to put into action what you're waiting for, what you're actively waiting for. Now, when we read lessons like this, we know, or we think we know, as the gospel passage itself tells us, who knows for sure, but we kind of think we know that Jesus, the Son of Man, as it's put in this gospel lesson, the Christ, God, God's self, isn't going to return to earth today or tomorrow or even before this Christmas comes this year to once and for all bring peace to the whole world and see that everybody is fed and cared for and bring salvation for all. But here's the active waiting part. You start to live like it. We put into action what we're waiting for, what we're actively waiting for. Love came down at Christmas. Love is coming again fully into the world, and we're going to be and do and act like people who are all about that. That's the message of the prophet. That's the message, at least one of the main messages, of the Advent season. Among the world's words, you'll see, if you look up the biblical word for wait, in the big, fancy, academic Greek lexicon that for some reason I keep low down on a shelf, so I almost feel like calling Joshua to help me pick it up when I want to look in it. If you look up this word, this biblical word for waiting, in that fancy dictionary, you see words like fortitude, endurance, steadfastness, perseverance, forbearance, all different words for basically saying active waiting, for basically saying you keep on keeping on, you keep on keeping on because the world needs it, and you need it. We all need it. The hope that we have in God's love, finally, once and for all, coming and overcoming and extending to all the world, that's deep in our bones because we feel it and experience, and we know it deep down in our souls that love came down at Christmas 
that love will come down and have the final say, that God is with us, Emmanuel. You, we, actively wait and expectantly await the birth and the rebirth, the coming and the coming again of Christ into our world because we know it already. And we know that that's exactly what life and life abundant, good and deep life well lived is all about. And so on the first Sunday of Advent, let all of God's expectant and active waiters and doers say together, Amen. Amen. Let us turn now to, to uh, hymn number 109, Watchmen Tell Us of the Night. Let us all stand and sing together verses 1 and 2. <laughs> time of prayer, I have a couple of prayer requests to share with you. Uh, sadly, Denise Ost has lost her aunt who died earlier today. So we thank God for the life of Lydia. 95 years of good living. We thank God for all the life she shared. And then also, uh, Denise's son Jake, Jake Ost, who just confirmed last year here, he just suffered a sports injury. So we pray for his healing as well. Let us pray. O God of Advent, O God of love that came down on that first Christmas and that is with us always and that is coming again. O God of good and full and abundant life for all. We thank you for this church and for all that we do with our partners and ministry here and around our nation and world and with your Holy Spirit to share the good news of your love and care alive in the world. The hope that we have for our own lives and for the world. And we pray, O oh God, for our world, its leaders and people, all of us who are made to care for each other and for your great creation. 
We pray that all would know that all of us are made in your image, worthy of care, worthy of love, built for hope. And we pray, O oh God, for all who are sick and recovering from illness and injury, including Jake, Philia, Christopher, Karen, Millicent, Noriko, Patrick, Marcelina, Jean, Connie, Anne, Charlotte, Dora, Jackie, and Jack. We pray for all those in residential care, remembering especially our sister Hannah. And we pray for all who are grieving or suffering loss of any kind, remembering especially Denise's family and all mourning the loss of her Aunt Lydia, remembering the family of Pastor Ron Wilson and all grieving his loss. All other prayers, O oh God, we bring to you as we hold them in silence or as we call them out aloud now. Hear all these prayers, O oh God, and hear us as we pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O oh God, all that we have is from you. Bless us as we respond. Bless us as we give so that the ministry of the church in the gardens might thrive, so that the people of our community and world may have hope and know and feel your love and care. Amen. The ushers will move among us.
Dear Father, whom we know in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, our source of hope, how we are so grateful to you for all the grace and blessings you have given us. We know, Father, that we are not worthy, but you still love us and save us. Today, with a cheerful heart, we present our offerings to you. Please accept them as our expressions of gratitude and praise. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to become the channel of your blessings to your church. May you bless these offerings to glorify your name, spread the hope of your love, and expand your kingdom on earth. By the name of Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our God of deliverance, the love of our hearts, we gratefully pray. Amen. Now is the time for our communion servers to begin circulating among us with the communion elements. And those joining us online, if you haven't already, now is the time to prepare a piece of bread or substitute a cup of juice or substitute. elements are being distributed, let me invite us into Holy Communion. As we enter into Holy Communion on this first Sunday of Advent, I want to share a quote from the spiritual writer, priest, theologian, and mentor to so many, Henri Nouwen. It's so true with regard to our understanding of Advent and so true to our understanding and experience of Holy Communion together. Nouwen writes, the Lord is always coming. When you have ears to hear and eyes to see, you will recognize Christ at any moment in your life. Life is Advent. Life is recognizing the coming of the Lord. Amen. It's true of Advent, and as I say, it's true of Holy Communion. Christ calls us to the table of hope, the table of God's grace, the table of peace and joy and love. Christ calls us to be one. Christ calls us to take and eat, to take and drink, to take in all that Christ is for us and for the world, and in turn to share Christ's love with others. After, notice, after we have taken Christ in and into ourselves, we know Christ's love for us and the hope that gives us, and then we share that hope and love and joy and peace with others and feel it growing within us. Life is Advent, life is Holy Communion, life is recognizing Christ at any and every moment of life. And so we begin with the great thanksgiving as found in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give our thanks and praise, O living and loving God, who created the world and created all people of the world in your expansive, diverse image, who hears the cries of your people and comes to us through the words of the prophets, through the actions of the faithful in every time and every place, and through Jesus the Christ, our Savior, teacher, healer, brother, and friend, the very embodiment of your love, come to be born and to live among us, to show your love, to heal us, and to make us whole. 
to show us the way of life and life abundant for all. Therefore, with those of every time and every place who live in and live out the hope that is ours in you, we praise you and join their unending hymn as found in our dream song. Oh, is it the Pilgrim Hymnal? A green, green songbook. Number 19. sustainer who is with us, who renews our lives and nurtures us through life. Let your Holy Spirit be on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine and on all who receive. Feed us, enlighten us, empower us, make us one with your Christ and with all who share the gift of your love and wholeness and peace. Amen. And so it was, we say on the night that he was betrayed, that he was handed over, or even that he was handed on. Jesus called all who would gather with him to a meal, and at that meal, he took up the bread, he gave thanks to God, he blessed it. And he broke it and gave it to all, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And so we do. Sisters and brothers, take and eat the body of Christ, the bread of life. Now please join me in the prayer after communion as found in your bulletin. O oh God, you gather us and feed us. You show us hope. You give us hope. Make, Make us, us one in you. you. Increase our hope. Lead, Lead us in the way, way of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us turn back to our green song hymnals, sing hymnals, 282, Song of Hope will start in Spanish. We'll do our best if you don't speak Spanish, and neither do I, but we'll, we'll certainly try our best, first in Spanish, then in English. Uh, 
and let us all stand and sing. Amen. Before we receive the blessing, I, I want to make a couple of announcements. Uh, number one, uh, coffee hour down in the lounge. Please join us. And as you're going to the lounge, the smart money says you're going to stay inside to stay dry. Well, actually, either way, you're going to pass the Boy Scouts in the breezeway and just outside the breezeway selling wreaths. Now, when you get to the lounge, there's going to be lounge and goodies and each other, but there's also going to be a card for Donna the wife of Reverend Ron Wilson, who died a couple of weeks ago. So please, we invite everybody to sign that card for Donna. And now let us receive the blessing as we go out and as we move on in hope. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you and the whole world hope. Amen. Amen.